Hey, let's move uh, to Avaya Choose Your Journey Strategy. What is this and uh, where was this event? So I went to Dubai. This was my first time in Dubai. This was at the JITEX conference. Um, so as you probably know, Avaya um, just recently exited their bankruptcy and they have pretty much it. Well, they have a, a new CEO who, who took them kind of through that restructuring, Alan Masaryk. I wrote about them a few months ago. Seems like it was long, longer than that, but it was just a couple of months ago. Um, and the, the choose your own or choose your journey strategy is really when you look at a lot of these um, kind of cloud-based companies, they are basically saying like cloud is the only way, like for contact centers, um, what Avaya is doing is they're saying, you don't, one, you don't have to move to the cloud or two, you can have your your phone and all of the things, which I think is, you know, what at least what they think they do best, but then have your digital um, channels in the cloud. Avaya works with like, I think maybe 90% of the Fortune 100 companies, um, but they're doing some really interesting things. So they're they're not saying like, okay, everything has to be cloud. It, they're very, it's very much like a choose your journey, like move whatever channels you want to the cloud, but they are doing some really interesting things with generative AI and with digital channels in the cloud. They did introduce some metaverse things that I thought were like a little bit like, okay, why are we wasting time on the metaverse? But then they took us over to show like some some use cases in government, interesting enough, where people are using the metaverse to walk into, well, virtually walk into like um, a kind of like a customer service center and interact with people. So it's certainly in in that region um it's being used but i think one thing that really stood out to me is that when i talked to alan uh, masaryk the ceo i think it was about three months ago he said that you know they they got their restructuring done from a financial standpoint and now it's time to really restructure from an operational standpoint he hired a um basically a, almost an entirely new C-suite. They have really changed kind of their, their sales motion, their, their price structuring, pretty much everything. And it looks to me like the company is in really good shape. And I had met with him over video before, but this was the first time that I met with him in person, as well as some of their other top executives. And I think that they're I think they're in really good shape. It was a really good um, couple of days meeting with them. I think they've got some really solid innovations, definitely on their AI. Um, some of the things that I saw for contact center, I think are things that probably we're going to see from most vendors, but they're they're ahead on on some things, certainly on um, kind of optimizing for um, looking out for kind of the agent burnout, which is super important right now, especially as we're going into the holidays. I'm doing some research on that right now, actually. Um, so I think that they're, you know, like, like I said, other than I think the metaverse stuff for me, that's just for me, maybe because I'm old. <laughs> I always feel young, but then I'm like, when stuff like that comes up, I'm like, why, why the metaverse? But, um, but it was good. It was good to spend time with them, and it was good to see, even just in a couple of months, the progress that they've made towards the things that Alan said were going to happen in a few months. I think that have happened in in those few months. And so, uh, if if I'm taking another page from your book, if I'm looking at the executive team of a company to kind of judge whether you know they're primed for success. I got to tell you, they have been up against some some tough. Um, not not they have tough competition. I mean, it's a it's a competitive market, but they also are up against kind of some tough um, reputational issues. Yeah. Right. I mean, this is their second bankruptcy, and their competition likes to point that out. Well, listen, it's, it's, there's a lot of companies that are, were in transition between, you know, 
different versions of of modern work <clears throat> and you know they're best known for areas that that aren't necessarily modern mm -hmm. and then every company microsoft was in this case probably a decade ago you know they had a completely failed uh smartphone business they bought uh went out of business it looked like the web was going to eat you know uh word and powerpoint and and excel and they really weren't that big a part of the cloud right and and to their credit they muscled they power out powered out of this thing leveraging their base of customers mm -hmm. and avaya needs to do the same thing right mm -hmm. if you're if your holistic solution is a you know dial tone uh device and and services solely inside of the enterprise that's not going to cut it it's not enough yeah and you know, uh, their plan is to kind of extend it. It kind of reminds me a little bit of Mitel um, uh, in uh, in a way, maybe not 100% uh, the same, but yeah, that's their challenge. And, you know, I'd like to say that each bankruptcy makes the company uh, stronger, but at some point, right, um, if they don't power out of this one, um, I don't know who would offer them money to to get out of this one. So uh, best of luck, Avaya. Uh, 